All down. All silent. Going, going, going. Gone. So congratulations. Welcome to the Current Market Insights Podcast, brought to you by Harris Partners Real Estate. Each episode, we chat with real estate author and industry leader, Peter O'Malley, to discuss the current property market conditions and provide insights to assist you on your property journey. G'day, Peter, and thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Kieran. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So today I want to have a bit of a chat, Peter, about uh, a scenario that I've heard a few times and, and has certainly come to the fore just this week. I sat down with my friend Blake during the week and had some coffee. We were chatting about him and his wife's attempts to buy a, a property in the inner west. And uh, they've been looking at houses around Newtown, Redfern, places like that, going to auction after auction and every single time getting there and finding out that the guide of $1.2 million come along and buy has been substantially below where the properties ended up. I wonder, you know, in all your experience and all your time, you know, looking at property and, and particularly at the moment, if you're a buyer in the market, how can you go along to an auction and reasonably expect that you might have a chance of buying? Well, let's go back one step, Kieran, because this is very common, this scenario that your friend's been through. I ask you this question, how do you have an auction with one buyer? Well, you don't. You can't. You need multiple buyers there to fuel the bidding, right? Now, in the dark old days, there was a thing known as dummy bidding, where the vendor and or the real estate agent, not casting stones, but the reality was there were people bidding at auctions that had no intention of buying the property at auction. They were there simply to add depth to the bidding. The Department of Fair Trade came down really heavy on this practice and they did a reasonable job of stamping it out, although I'm still not convinced that the process is completely stamped out. But nevertheless, real estate agents needed a new way to have multiple bidders at an auction. And the best way to get people to commit to an auction and turn up to an auction is advertise a property below its true price. Once that happens, then you've got the recipe from a real estate agent's perspective, you've got the recipe for an auction in place. So if it's being advertised below its its true price, surely, as you say, fair trading's been quite harsh on dummy bidding. Surely there's some mechanism in place to ensure that agents aren't doing that. There is, but it's really exploitable and consumers need to know that that uh, the Department of Fair Trade uh, in 2015 made best efforts to clean this side of the industry up. But the reality, as home buyers like your friend Blake know, it hasn't been cleaned up at all. All it means is that agents can be and have been a lot more uh, disciplined in covering their tracks through paperwork. So again, we come back to this point. As a consumer, if you are interested in a property the best thing to do is do your research as to the true value of that property in your eyes and what is that property worth to you independent of anything that the real estate agent may tell you. I had a friend too that bid at auction recently and the real estate agent genuinely had him believing that he was a chance of buying the property for under 1.8 million and it sold for 1.85 and it passed in above 1.8, meaning at no stage of the process was he any chance of buying that property? But what the real estate agent needed first and foremost is she needed bidders at the auction. And then she's got a display for her vendor and a justification to her vendor as to why they should take the highest bid on the day. So he becomes what we call an auction bunny or cannon fodder, where he has maxed out in price before the auction has even hit the vendor's reserve. So do you think that, you know, auction agents out there, do you think that throughout the campaign they're looking for for auction bunnies, people to come and, you know, be that perfect position player or or position piece for the campaign to then have their vendor say, you know what, we've got our standout buyer here and then all these bunnies just lining up beneath? Uh, Look, I won't say that every agent on every auction is doing this, but yes, we've both heard as real estate agents over the years, real estate agents letting home buyers believe that there are a really good chance of buying the property on Saturday at auction, that there's not much interest in, in inverted commas, and the home buyer turns up on the Saturday morning optimistic about their chances, and then he's confronted with a multitude of buyer competition, and uh, they see that competition go well past their budget, and as I say, similar to what happened to my friend, the most galling of all is when the property passes in above what the agent's price guide was and above what the buyer's budget was, meaning that the whole 
exercise was a complete and utter waste of time for the home buyer. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned that uh, one of the best ways to avoid this for a buyer is to do their own research before they, they commit to going to an auction or, or to even look at a property. Yes. For the average person out there, you know, just a general consumer, what are, uh, I guess, the best recommendations for places that they can do research? I'd be looking under the sold section of uh, domain and realestate.com. I'd be turning up to multiple uh, inspections on the target property to get a sense of how much interest there is or isn't in the property. I think that's a, an underrated tool for a home buyer leading in to the auction. If you feel that the budget that you have for the target property may not be enough to buy the property on auction day, you can always make an offer prior to on the condition that this is the price I'll pay for the property here and now, but just so you know, we're not attending the auction. So I need you and the vendor, Mr. Real Estate Agent, to make a call on my offer here and now. And that just saves you the heartache of uh, turning up to the auction fronting the crowd, fronting the auctioneer, and then being blown out of the water. Absolutely. A lot of the things I hear, and, and again, through discussions with my friend through the week, uh, is that you know the agents are saying to them, look, this house has, has had such an amazing response and it's just blown through the reserve price. Uh, it's something that we see reported in the media all the time. You know, what an amazing sale, great X amount above reserve or, or X percent above reserve. Given what we've talked about, how much stock can people place in this this idea of you know above reserve as being a, a marker of a successful campaign? Well, the whole reserve price is propaganda, where the real estate agent will drop what the reserve was after the auction when speaking to the property journalist to glorify the result that it was. There aren't too many what we call out-of-line sales happening in the market at the moment, Kieran. There are some. And what I would say to your friend Blake and other people that have lost out at an auction if you're outbid above the reserve price, you, you are not a victim of underquoting. You've been outbid. And being outbid due to fair competition is a completely different point to being a victim of underquoting. The truest sign that you're an auction bunny and you're a victim of underquoting, as I say, is that your budget has been exhausted before the auction has even hit the reserve price. That's when you didn't need to be there, but you're encouraged to attend on the basis that you may be successful and you were never going to be. But there are properties around Sydney at the moment that are exceeding real estate agents and vendors' price expectations, and that's what makes a marketplace, fair competition. And we've had that instance ourselves in our own office where we expect it to go for a certain price and it goes above that. That does not mean the underbidders are a victim of underquoting, though. You mentioned that obviously doing research beforehand is, is probably the best way for, for buyers to make sure they are prepared. In the event that they do find themselves, as you say, as a true auction bunny coming up short of even the level where it's passed in, is there anything that buyers can do after a, an auction campaign to, I guess, show their discontent or, or uh, ensure that it doesn't happen to them again? There are avenues. They can write to the Department of Fair Trade if they genuinely feel that they've been um, misled and underquoted to. It is very easy for agents to cover their tracks and, as you've touched on today, blame the market, have paperwork that gives them the right to quote the property at, at, at such a price. And that's why I think um, instead of, on a personal level, instead of making a complaint to a bureaucratic authority like the Department of Fair Trade, I would be more inclined to vote with my feet and either not do business with that agent again or do business on my terms, which is just because you want to go to auction on the 5th of December doesn't mean that I have to. And this is what I'll pay for that property here and now today. And like a bus, if I miss this one, there's another one coming. So you've got to take control back from the agent as a buyer. Otherwise, you will get knocked around and ultimately end up winning the bidding on the wrong property, which is what we've seen happen as well particularly at the moment where the market is a little bit unpredictable. Do you think that you know most of those pre-auction offers that the buyers can put in is a bit of a, uh, I guess, a way of taking control? Do you think that there would be more success for those in the current kind of market as opposed to you know one where its prices are just booming ahead? The auction clearance rate is running somewhere around 40 to 45% at the moment, Kieran, in Sydney and has been for the best part of the year. Now, the majority of those successful auctions have actually sold before the auction day, and it's the auction campaign in totality where 45% of them are successful. 
if you have a vision when you list your home or when you're buying a home of an auction being a crowd and a multitude of buyers trying to buy your home in one go, that's not really happening out there in the marketplace across the board at the moment. That's more isolated than trend. Now, last year in 2021, nearly every auction campaign and every property that went to market was competitive. But there's no doubt the competition is down at the moment. And even when the market was booming, the number of properties that sold prior to auction was a lot higher than people would have thought it was because buyers were making standout offers before the auction to avoid the auction process or avoid being an auction bunny. So if you're very clear in your own mind what you're prepared to pay for a property and you put that offer to the vendor in this market and the vendor doesn't want it before auction day, they're probably not going to want it on auction day and you're better off just moving on to the next one. No, excellent advice as always, Peter. And I think uh, we can never underestimate the power of doing good research beforehand. And taking control indeed. Absolutely. Well, look, as always, thanks for joining me today, Peter. Pleasure. Thanks, Kieran. Thanks for joining us on the Current Market Insights podcast, brought to you by Harris Partners Real Estate, the podcast providing real estate insights you won't find anywhere else.